Hi there. Thanks for joining us. My name is Breck Offen. I'm the head of trade promotion here at Google. I'm joined today by Bob Houck, who's executive director of the Trade Promotion Management Association and author of the book, Trade Promotion Marketing. Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So the goal of today is try and educate you on uh, the basics of trade promotion and how it could apply to your world. Uh, so before we begin, Bob, I was hoping you could do a little intro, introduce yourself, Trade Promotion Management Association. Okay. Uh, as for me, uh, as you can probably tell from the uh, color of my hair, I've been at this for a long time. I've been uh, doing trade promotion marketing uh, in its various forms, co-op advertising, MDF, and some other uh, areas uh, for about 35 years. Uh, and uh, I've worked in just about every uh, channel. As for the Trade Promotion Management Association, uh, it is a uh, trade association. It's the only trade association uh, specifically directed towards uh, the practice of, of trade promotion marketing and, and, and management and, and co-op advertising and rebates and all the various forms that uh, trade promotion takes. Uh, it is intended to help collaborate, uh, to facilitate collaboration between uh, manufacturers and retailers around trade promotion and to help them both uh, make trade promotion more effective and more efficient. So with that said, can you explain to some of the viewers who aren't as familiar with trade promotion, standard traditional trade promotion, can you give a little background on, on what it is? Yes, um, it's actually it's, it's a very old practice. It goes back uh, into the 19th century. I, I won't uh, bore you with, uh, with all the 120 plus years of it, uh, but uh, it it started out to be the idea is is anything that helps that, that the manufacturer the supplier helps the uh, retailer uh, to move the product through the channel that is that is trade promotion marketing uh, and it uh, uh, started out primarily with with media of course because that's what was available newspaper and then later radio and, and television it has evolved into very much of, of in-store marketing uh, and, uh, and pricing and, and such that, that takes place, particularly in the uh, CPG arena and grocery stores and, and, and drug, but also uh, in, in all the mass merchants. Uh, that uh, Paying for an end cap is as important now as paying for a newspaper ad or a TV ad. And what do you estimate the total market is again? Well, I, my own estimate is, is in the range of uh, four to five hundred billion dollars uh, worldwide. I, I saw an estimate recently that said a trillion dollars. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to quibble. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a very very large number. Real quickly on the on the background piece again, um, who typically drives trade promotion? Uh, is it manufacturer driven? Is it retailer driven? Or is it a little bit of both? It's 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 both, and that's why collaboration is is very very important, and and uh, and building partnerships between the manufacturer and the retailer to do it effectively and efficiently. Uh, but. Uh, the, uh, the power certainly these days, uh, with, with, with retail consolidation, the, the, the power is in the hands of the retailers to a great extent, and they often uh, dictate terms. And, uh, uh, you know, that's understandable why that happens. It probably isn't the best thing to happen. Can you give a, a brief 30-second overview about the, what the Robinson-Pacman Act is? The Supreme Court once said, uh, I, I may misquote this very slightly, that the Robinson-Pacman Act is not a model of clarity. I think was the, was the phrasing that they used. What it, what it basically says, though, is that if you offer trade promotion funding, then you have to offer the same proportionate amount of funding to all of your customers. So that if you are uh, uh, selling a million dollars worth of product through uh, Walmart and $100,000 worth of product through Joe's Corner Store, then you can give Walmart 10 times as much money as you're giving to Joe's Corner Store. Mm -hmm. That's the law. The reality is that, again, as we talk about value-based funding, the reality is that Walmart probably gets a whole lot more than 10, for, right. 10, times, 10 times the amount. But, uh, you know, that's the, it's also important to understand the I, I'm going to sound like I'm, I'm advocating the breaking of laws, and I'm not. I'm just explaining sure. what the reality is. The Federal Trade Commission, which is, has the authority, uh, the responsibility for uh, enforcing the robinson Patman Act, and to some extent the Supreme Court in, in their decision, uh, it, they are not enforcing it to any great extent. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the courts have really moved towards, towards saying, unless we see damage to the marketplace, we're not going to step in on this.